If you're wondering why my room is only lit up by some candlelights, it's because today we are looking at a very special lens, which is the Lauer Argus 33mm f0.95 lens. Lauer usually is famous for their macro lens and also their ultra wide angle lens. So this Argus 33mm f0.95 lens is their first ever ultra fast lens. And right now I'm using the Argus lens to film this video and I'm shooting at the maximum aperture f0.95. And because of that, I also want to do some comparison with the other ultra fast lens in the market because I'm quite curious to see how is the performance of the lower Argus lens compared to other lenses in the market. And that's why we got the Zhongyi Meticon 35mm f0.95 lens. Zhongyi, I think, is probably most famous for the ultra fast lens. And also, we got the 7 Artisan 35mm f0.95 lens. So, that in this video, we're going to do some comparison to see how this new Lauer Argus lens performance is like when compared to these two other f0.95 lenses. <laughs> Hello, good morning everyone, which one here, welcome back to the channel. Today we have three 33 to 35 mm f0.95 lenses here. These lenses are designed for APS-C cameras, so it's available for most of the popular APS-C mirrorless cameras. Today I have the Fuji mount here, but because the optical quality and the design of these lenses are pretty much identical between all the different versions, so what I'm going to show you would apply to all the different versions as well. Now, I have already done a lot of testings and comparison over the last two weeks comparing these three lenses. So let's get started so that I can share with you what I have found. All these three F0.95 lenses are completely manual mechanical lenses. So they're all many focus lenses and there's no electronic contacts at the back of the lens. They all have a full metal construction. So all of these three lenses feel very solid. The size of the Metacon and the 7 Artisan lens are very similar, as you can see. And also the weight of this lens are also very similar. While the lower is quite a bit bigger than the other two lenses. Even if I remove the lens hood, which is separated, while the other two lenses doesn't have any lens hood separated, you can see that the lower lens is still quite a bit bigger and also quite a bit heavier than the other two lenses. So when you mount it on a camera like this Fuji X-T3, the lower does feel a little bit front heavy while the other two lenses wouldn't really feel that at all. One thing I want to add is that both the Metacon and the 7 Artisans lens, when you change the focus distance from infinity back to the closest focus distance, the height of both these two lenses would extend a little bit, while with the lower lens, the outside dimension wouldn't change at all when you are changing the focus distance. As I have just mentioned before, the Lao Argus lens does comes with a lens hood and this is something the 7 Artisan and the Metacon lens they don't have. The lens hood also feels very good quality. It's completely made of metal and it feels very premium. It reminds me of the lens hood that I have on my Leica Q. And also when you clip it onto the lens, the click feels wonderful. And there is only one lens cap that comes with this lens, which you have to use it with the lens hood. So I guess Lauer pretty much expect the user would have the lens hood on the lens all the time. Now, the lens and the lens hood feel very nice and very solid and very metal. However, the lens cap, you have to slide it up like this to remove it, does not feel quite the same. If you look at it, it actually looks quite nice, but when you hold it, you find that it's just made of plastic and also quite a thin piece of plastic. So it doesn't quite have the same kind of build quality compared to the lens. 
both the Mitacon and the 7 Artisan's lens has a focus flow of around 90 degree, while the Lauer has a much longer focus flow, which is around 270 degree. And also because the focus ring on the Lauer, it feels very smooth, but also it feels a little bit tight. So if you want to quickly change from the closest focus distance to infinity, it will be quite hard to do it very quickly. So you don't have this problem with the other two lenses. However, the 7 Artisan lens, because the focus ring, it feels quite loose. So it could be a little bit tricky sometimes if you want to focus very precisely when you are shooting at the maximum aperture f0.95. All these three lenses has a decrypted aperture ring and I absolutely hate it. And I just don't understand why a lot of lens manufacturers these days really love to have a decrypted aperture ring. Now, you may say it's because I'm mainly a photographer, so I love to have a aperture ring that has clicks. That is true. But over the last few years, I have been doing more and more video and when I'm doing video filming, I also never found that I need to change the aperture during the video of the shot, which is the benefit you have a decrypted aperture ring. And I also talked to some of my videographer friends. I asked them, have you ever need to uh, have a decrypted aperture ring so that you can change aperture smoothly during the video of the shot? And they all told me that no, they never ever done that. So please, Lauer or Mythical or Seven Artisans, if you guys are watching this video, please, please consider making your next lens, your aperture ring has clicks because it is just so much better for photographers. And for videographers, I really don't think it would make it harder for them to use the lens. So please consider that. Or even better, if you make the aperture ring to have a selectable feature so you can choose whether you want to have clicks or not when you are using the lens. Okay, anyway, so even though all these three lenses, they all have a full metal construction, maybe because I just love the look and design of the Lauer Argus lens the most. So when I'm switching between these three lenses, I definitely prefer the Lauer in terms of the design and build quality. One of the main reasons why you may want to buy a f0.95 lens is because you want to shoot under low light condition. So I did a quick test to test how's the light gathering performance of these three lenses. These are three photos that I shot with each of these lenses at f0.95 and using identical exposure settings. So if you look at them side by side, you can see the actual brightness or the exposure of these three lenses are pretty much the same. So that means the T-stop of these lenses are virtually identical. And with these three lenses, the lower is a 33mm lens while the other two lenses are 35mm lenses. So if you compare the field of view of these three lenses, the lower has the widest field of view while the 7 Artisan lens has the narrowest field of view even though the 7 Artisan lens and the Mitocon, they have the same focal length. Okay, next, let's have a look at the image sharpness, which is something I know a lot of you guys are most interested in. Now, if we look at the center image sharpness, at f0.95, I think Lauer is clearly the sharpest lens of the three. It is very sharp even at f0.95. The Mitocon would be the second as it's still pretty sharp at f0.95, while 7 Artisan lens would be the last S. It's still very usable, but compared to the other two lenses, it's just not quite as sharp. The sharpness of all these three lenses would improve when you stop down to f1.4, but the Mitocon and the 7 Artisan's lens has a more noticeable sharpness improvement when you stop down to f1.4, and I think it's mostly due to the fact that they were a little bit softer at f0.95. And another thing is, when you stop down the lens to f1.4, all these three lenses would improve the contrast quite a bit. Now let's have a look at the corner sharpness. I think all these three lenses are quite soft at f0.95, but the lower is definitely a little bit sharper than the other two lenses. I would say the lower is probably borderline usable even at f0.95. When stopped down to f1.4, 
The lower is now reasonably sharp, while the two other lenses you need to stop down to f2 for similar kind of corner sharpness. So overall, if your focus distance is a couple of meters away like my sample photos, the lower would be the sharpest lens out of these three. Fast lenses would quite often have quite a bit of chromatic aberration, so f0.95 lens usually would have quite a bit of chromatic aberration. So that's why when I designed this t-shirt, I put quite a bit of chromatic aberration on all the letters because that's what usually a f0.95 lens would give you. But interestingly, Lauer called this Lauer Argus 33mm f0.95 lens a APO lens or Apple lens. And what that means is the lens should have no or very small amount of chromatic aberration. So that's something that I really want to find out because if you ask me, I don't really mind if the lens is a little bit soft when you are shooting at f0.95, but I just hate it when there is a lot of chromatic aberration, when there's a lot of nasty color fringing that would make me want to stop down the lens rather than shooting it at wide open. Okay, so now let's have a look at these test photos that all shot at f0.95. And if we zoom into some high contrast area, we can easily see the lower definitely has the least amount of chromatic aberration. I won't say it has no chromatic aberration because you can still see a little bit of it, but it is much better than the other two lenses. The Metacon actually doesn't perform too bad as the chromatic aberration is kept at a quite low level. The 7 Artisans lens has noticeably more chromatic aberration compared to the other two lenses. And look at this local test photo that also all shot at f0.95. Again, the 7 Artisan lens has the worst local. You can see some very serious color fringing. The lower is once again the best out of the three and it has very small amount of color fringing. Metagon is also not bad at all, it's only marginally worse than the lower. In terms of vignetting, this time it is the lower that has the most or the worst vignetting when shooting at f0.95. Metagon once again is second, while the 7 Artisan has the least amount of vignetting. When stopped down to f1.4, the 7 Artisan lens already has very minimal amount of vignetting. And when stopped down to f2.8, then all three lenses have virtually no vignetting. I'm actually a little bit surprised because the lower is the largest lens out of the three and also it has the largest front filter thread. But surprisingly, it is the 7 Artisan lens that has the best vignetting performance. Bokeh is another reason why you may want to buy a f0.95 lens because the large aperture allow you to dissolve the background easily. Now let's have a look at all these sample photos again all shot at the maximum aperture f0.95. Lawa has the smoothest and most creamy bokeh out of these three lenses. Mitagon has a bit of halo around the edge of the bokeh while the 7 Artisan lens the halo is pretty noticeable, so it could make the bokeh look a little bit nervous. In terms of the shape of the bokeh, the bokeh from Lauer is relatively round with a little bit of swirly bokeh at the corner. The bokeh from Mitagon, while it also looks relatively round at the center of the frame, but at the edge or corner of the frame, the bokeh now has a very weird looking triangle shape. The bokeh from the 7 Artisan lens looks a little bit similar to the Mitagon, but it's not quite extreme. So if you look at the corners, the bokeh has a oval shape with a pointy end, but it's not quite the triangle shape like the Mitagon lens. Look at this set of brick wall test photos. All these three lenses have noticeable barrel distortion. It's hard to say which one is the best or the worst as I think the overall amount of distortion is quite similar but the pattern is slightly different. But while I say the distortion is noticeable, it's not really terrible when you are shooting real life photos. All these three lenses have a very similar minimum focus distance which is around 35 to 37 centimeter. 
Look at this set of photos that I shot at f0.95 at the minimum focus distance for each of these lenses. The 7 Artisans lens, because it has the narrowest field of view, so it has a slightly higher maximum magnification, while the lower and the middle cone are very similar. In terms of image sharpness at the closest focus distance, this time lower is the softest, Medical is a little bit sharper than the lower while the 7 Artisan lens is the sharpest of these three lenses. So that means if you want to capture a lot of really close-up photos, the 7 Artisan lens would be the best choice for you. All these three lenses would have quite a bit of lens flare and also the contrast would drop a little bit when you are shooting towards the sun direction on a bright sunny day. However, the lens flare looks quite different between all these three lenses. If you want to have the least amount of lens flare, the 7 Artisan lens would be the one for you. However, if you are someone like me who don't mind or actually love to have a bit of lens flare in your photo or video, especially if the lens flare is beautiful, then I think you would love the lower. At first, I thought this lower Argus lens has just way too much lens flare, but the more I look at it, the more I just love that red lens flare from the lower lens. It's just very cinematic and just absolutely beautiful. So when I was out testing this lens, I actually want to shoot directly into the sun and always point the camera to any light source because the lens flare just add a lot of character to the photo. For example, look at this photo I shot last weekend. If this photo doesn't have that bright red lens flare, it would just look so much more boring instead. To me, just this red lens flare alone is enough reason for me to choose the lower lens over the other two lenses. But then I just really love having beautiful lens flare in my photo. Okay, now let's have a look at the sun stars. From around f8 to f11, all these three lenses were starting to render bright point light source into sun stars. I like the sun stars from the lower lens the most, but the sun stars from the 7 Artisan lens are also very nice and very clean. The sun stars from the Medicon doesn't look quite as clean as the other two lenses. Now one thing you may need to aware is, the lower lens can only stop down to the minimum aperture of f11, which I was a bit surprised when I was testing the sun stars, while the other two lenses can both be stopped down to f16. Usually, it means some advantage to the 7 Artisans and the Metacom because a smaller aperture would allow you to render some longer and sharper sun stars. However, both of these lenses has quite a bit of ghosting when shooting bright light source at f16. So while the sun star is a little bit sharper at f16, the ghosting could be a little bit distracting. Overall, I think both the lower lens and the 7 Artisan lens are very good choice if you enjoy having sun stars in your photo. A very fast lens could be great for astrophotography, but at the same time, usually the more affordable ultra fast lens would have quite a bit of coma, which make it not really suitable for astrophotography. So I shot some test photos at f0.95 with each of these lenses and see how they perform if you use them for astrophotography. Look at the photo from the lower lens. I think the amount of coma is actually at a quite acceptable level, even shooting at f0.95. The 7 Artisan lens is also quite good, but maybe slightly more coma than the lower lens. The medical is probably the worst out of these three lenses as it has more noticeable coma than the other two lenses. So if astrophotography is also something that you want to do, I think the lower Argus lens is probably the best choice for you. These are the focus briefing test video that I changed the focus from around 0 0.7 meter to infinity. All these three lenses show some amount of focus briefing. The lower and the medical has very similar amount of focus briefing, while the 7 Artisan lens has a little bit more focus briefing than the other two lenses. After doing all these testings and also using each of these three lenses to shoot quite a bit of photo in real world, I think each of these three lenses has their own pros and cons. For example, the 7 Artisan lens would probably be the best value for money lens out of these three. 
the Metacon, it has an overall quite balanced design as you would notice in my review. It does reasonably well in most of the areas. But if you ask me, I think my favorite lens out of these three would be the lower because it is the sharpest lens out of the three, but more importantly, the low amount of chromatic aberration when you're shooting at f0.95, it just makes this lens a lot more usable compared to the other two lenses. Because like I mentioned earlier in this video, I don't really mind if the lens is a little bit soft at 0 0.95, but I just absolutely hate it when I see some nasty color fringing in my photo. And that's just something make me want to stop down the lens to avoid having those nasty color fringing. But with this lower lens, when I'm shooting at f0.95, there is very minimal amount of color fringing. So that makes this lens really usable at 0 0.95. I also really like how the lower Argus lens render the out of focus area or the bokeh. It just looks more pleasing and the same I can say about the lens flare from the lower lens. It just looks more beautiful compared to the other two lenses. But there are also a few things that I don't really like about the lower lens. I think the biggest one is the focus flow of this lens. It's just way too long. Usually, I quite enjoy shooting lens with a slightly longer focus flow because it allows me to adjust the focus more precisely. But 270 degree is just way longer than what I like. And the other thing is, I really wish it has a clicked aperture range. But having said that, this is the same issue with all these three lenses. So overall, if I have to choose one lens out of these three, I would go for the lower Argus lens, even though it is also a little bit larger and also a little bit heavier than the other two lenses. But that's just how I would pick. I would be interested to hear your thoughts as well. Which of these three F0.95 lens is your favorite lens? Drop a comment below and let me know. Thank you very much for watching this video and I will see you in my next video.